All right, so thanks for joining us for another episode of UEM PDTV. We're really happy to have you here with us, and we're especially happy to have the UEM production team who's going to share some of the tips of the trade on how to make pro quality videos. I, I think all of us see the need to have a more polished, professional look to our videos. And the, the UEN, no one does it better than the production team we have here at UEN, and they're gonna share with us their tips and tricks of the trade. So let's turn it over to them. Thanks, Jared. We're excited to be here on PDTV today. We're used to being behind the camera, but we're excited to share with you some of our tips to make your video look a little bit more professional. Here I have today with me, my team from UEN. Uh, I'm Katie Garrett and we have Fernando Lara and Nicole Reynolds. We're the team that produces videos for our online professional development courses, content for our broadcast station, and whatever else comes our way. So you might wonder, why should I take the time to make my video look a little bit more professional? And there's a couple reasons. Um, when you create your own video content rather than using someone else's, you're able to add a personal touch and connect with your students and build a relationship when they are able to see and hear from you. The other thing is that it can increase uh, the learning of your students. When they can focus on the specific learning outcome that you're focused on, um, it can make sure that they are focusing on what you're trying to teach them instead of the distractions. Starting out, here's our top 10. All right. Well, thank you again so much for having us in this episode of PDTV. Uh, again, I'm Fernando Lara, and I'm going to talk to you about framing your shot. Um, so one of the most common things that uh, we've all witnessed and seen uh, throughout this time we've been working remotely is um, bad framing of Zoom recordings or video calls, right? Uh, we've all seen the, the shots where the camera is too low and you're pointing at your nose or the camera is too high and you're pointing down your forehead. Um, so what we want to do is make sure that you're center on the screen, um, you know, your eyesight and, and your, your face basically is kind of in the middle and uh, you're looking good, right? So what we're gonna talk about first is the rule of thirds. Um, so very quick, the, what the rule of thirds is, is basically it, uh, if you're looking at a screen, it divides the screen into nine squares, right? As you can see here with uh, this, the four different screenshots from our, one of our recent uh, episodes of uh, Some Good Education News, which you can check out on YouTube and on our website, um, is that the, all these um, uh, student body presidents that we interview from Southern Utah uh, colleges and universities um, are center in the middle of their screen. Right, we have uh, Penny that's a little bit off uh, to the side, but that's great because she has uh, the logo of her school in the back, uh, a cool little sign. You know, her background is not too too cluttered and whatnot. So, and everybody else, it's right in the middle which is great that's what we want uh, we don't want to have too much headroom we don't want to have too little headroom um, and and uh, yeah essentially this is what we want to to look at okay the next thing that we're going to talk about is the cluttering and spicing up your space just a tiny bit as you can see this is katie uh blunt this is our host of some good education news um and this is her home setup um so she has uh the table with the microphone on um you know she has a little globe on the, on the table and then the back has two shelves with uh books and some decorations right um she also has uh, a little bit of uh a, um, you know a small plant behind her uh which is great this is what we're trying to look for here um that it, your background is not too busy but also not too dull as well um, because uh, the what what we call in in our line of work is this is what we would call the production value right this is this adds to the visual style of of your presentation of the video that you're doing now if uh, you have um, uh, too much stuff in your back. Um, you want to make sure that you you're removing things that are branded um, that uh, you don't want to have on your screen on your recording, of course. Um, so so just be mindful of that. That's a one of the things that you can do to uh, to spice up your videos is uh, add a little bit of personality in the background of um, of your shot. Okay, hi everyone, Nicole here, and I'm gonna talk to you about some good lighting techniques. So good lighting can make or break your video. 
If you're too dark or in shadow or you have a bright white light behind you, like say a window, no one's gonna be able to see you and your camera will have a very hard time focusing and things like that. So you wanna make yourself look good. When you're looking for some good light for your videos, natural lighting is probably one of the easiest and best uh, lights, lighting sources that you can have. Um, if you can, try and face a window and be about three to four feet away because that will make sure that your light is not too harsh but not too dim. If natural light is a little hard for you to come by, try and use some other light sources that are easily around your house like a lamp, a desk lamp, or a ring light that you may have. Right here is a quick you know, example of a ring light setup that my husband so graciously posed for. Um, this is him in his home office and he's got his camera set up on the top of his uh, widescreen monitor there with the ring light just behind it. And behind him, you can see his background. It's just a nice solid color. One other thing you want to keep in mind when you're doing your light is your light color. Uh, you may not notice this very often, but daylight is more blue and your incandescent lights that are in your home tend to be more warm or more orange. So if you use a lamp, make sure that you're not mixing your lighting sources. So you don't wanna be sitting by a window with a very orange lamp next to you. Um, if you have harsh light, diffuse it if you can. Like if your window does has no blinds or anything on it, try hanging some sheer curtains or a sheet over it to diffuse that light. They kind of act like clouds on a very bright day. You'll look a little better and your highlights on your face will not be as blown out or very white. So if you can, use more than one light source, but as I mentioned before, make sure their light color is very similar or you will have conflicting colors and that can be a distraction and decrease your production value. Make sure that you don't have any harsh shadows on your face and then here is a quick example of my setup in my home office. I sit directly in front of a window, but I have blinds so I can control how much or how little light I would like to get through. And depending on the time of day, you know, the light can be harsher or less harsh. Thanks, Nicole. Um, so one of the most important aspects of your video isn't actually your video, it's your audio. So. Um, we like to say quality audio is invisible, but essential. It's one of those things that I often hear said that people will put up with poor video quality, but they will not put up with a poor audio quality. They'll just move on. Good audio equals good video. Take that into consideration when you're producing video that you really pay attention to your audio. So um, I say when you start it, um, recording your video, do a sound check. Um, so stop, pause, and listen to what's going on around you. You may think that you're in a very quiet environment, but when you actually pause, you'll hear, maybe it's my computer fan on my laptop that's running right now, or is the dog going to bark? There are lots of sounds around us that we kind of tune out just naturally, but when you're recording your video and your audio, those things are very noticeable to your audience and are distracting. Um, so do your own little sound check. Um, make sure that your audio is balanced. And what we mean by that is um, when you're editing, you can check the levels of your audio with the audio bar. Um, but but what, if you're bringing different sources of maybe music and um, speaking parts, make sure that, sure that those are consistent so that your audience or your students aren't turning up the volume, then turning it down, and having a really hard time trying to hear what's going on. So that's just a couple tips to um, make sure that your audio is great. Um, one thing that I didn't put on the slide that I'll I'll throw out there is, you know, if you're recording some video and you need a place that's not going to have um, an echo, if it's not hot outside, you can record inside a car. That's a great way to um, kind of reduce the echo. Um, again, if you're just recording audio for like a podcast or something like that, you can even put or some voiceover to go over 
something you're explaining, you can put a blanket over your head and create your own little sound booth in seconds. Um, but those are some really cheap but um, efficient ways to make your audio sound better. Awesome, thanks Katie. So now we're going to move on to your home setup. So one of the things that um, I like to tell people when uh, we talk about video production is that you can have the most expensive, uh, the cutting edge equipment, but uh, if your content is not good or great, it's not gonna matter, right? Most everybody nowadays is gonna have a cell phone uh, that's gonna shoot in uh, HD or even 4K. That's, is, that's gonna be your, your go-to if you don't have any cameras at all. Um, now you have to be a little bit mindful of, uh, of the, the memory that you have in your phone. And um, another cautionary thing that I would like to tell about phones is um, the, a lot of them have automatic settings for your um, light. So if you're filming with the phone, just make sure that you kind of lock um, that lighting so it doesn't increase the aperture or decrease it so it makes it brighter or darker automatically. Um, uh, some phones do allow you to do manual settings when it comes to that. So just be, be careful with that. Just do some uh, little Google search and you'll be able to find that. Next thing is webcams, right? So uh, right now we're all filming with our webcams that we have uh, and they're pretty great. Even uh, webcams that are pre-installed within your computers and in your laptop, they'll be great. Um, just make sure again, going back to that uh, framing of your shot, right? You wanna, if, if your laptop is sitting down below your chin, you wanna make sure you put a couple of books underneath to make it level with your eyes. Um, next thing, uh, DSLR cameras, as you can see in that, that little uh, Canon camera that we have uh, in that picture. DSLR cameras with inter interchangeable lenses uh, are awesome because a lot of them you can put mics on them, you can put a monitor, you can you know uh, accessorize it really well and then you can have different uh, lenses that allow you to manipulate the light a little bit more and have uh, depth of field that's, uh, that looks really good. Um, but again, this is if, if you have that available or if you have the funds to, to purchase one. Uh, uh, we're not saying you have to have this to have good content. Another thing that you might have around your house um, is your your headphones, right? Your, you want to have that good audio that Katie was talking about. Um, any type of microphone uh, is gonna help you achieve that. As you can see, I'm wearing my, my AirPods here. Um, usually though, I, I'll just throw those on uh, without a microphone on for Zoom calls and they work great. If I'm recording something, I'll have uh, a mic, which is plugged in right now through USB. But if I didn't have either of these things, uh, I have like 10 uh, sets of the old iPhone um, earbuds that have a mic on them. Uh, so if you have if you have those, you can definitely use those. Uh, you know they'll they hang uh, by your neck and they'll kind of align with your uh, with your vocal cords. So that's going to be definitely better than anything. Um, but again, if you don't have uh, any of those, uh, Katie's advice it was great. Go to your car if it's not hot. Put a blanket over your uh, yourself to record the audio. Um, you know, find a quiet room, quiet space. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much what we, we recommend on your home setup. Uh, again, your content is what matters and equipment is secondary. Okay, and some screen recording tools because we all know that like right now we are recording with our webcams and our built-in cameras. Uh, we mostly record on Macs here at UEN. So we're very familiar with QuickTime. It's a great recording software that just comes pre-built with your you know, Mac computers or your laptops. And you can set a recording area if that helps you, or you can record your whole screen, doesn't matter. It's great recording. You can do maximum uh, or high res recording. Um, PC recordings, I'm not as familiar with, but many of the webcams that you can order today, they come with their own software to record. And so you would just need to, you know, Google that and kind of see how to set up. Some other uh, PC recording software I'm aware of is Loom and Screencast-O-Matic. And if you're looking to purchase some software, Camtasia is a really great uh, screen recording software that many uh, coworkers that use PCs use at UEN. 
Another component of good video is having good graphics. So um, this would be the extra visuals that you add while you're talking to help your audience understand what you're talking about. So when you're able to see and hear it at the same time, that equals better understanding for your students. So a couple tools, ideas to create some graphics for your video would be um, Canva. This is a tool that I know a lot of teachers are loving already, but this is a tool that you could use to create some graphics for your video. So um, there's a lot of great templates that look really well done. The other thing is, I know you've created a lot, a lot of um, Google Slides, maybe some Nearpods or your PowerPoints. You could export those as um, a PNG or a JPEG. And as you're editing your video, you could bring those in as the graphics um, for your presentation. That's exactly what we did for this. Easy peasy. So next up is Adobe Spark. Um, because you have access to Adobe through the statewide license, this is a tool that you can easily create informational pages or graphics. Again, a lot of pre-made templates that make this super easy to make it look like you had a graphic designer working on your video. And if you're really looking to take your video up a notch and make it look even more amazing, you can check out these motion graphic templates. Um, there's some free ones um, available from Motion Array and also from Pixabay. So those um, will really enhance the production value of your content. All right, now on to editing. So I think for, for me, the first time I ever started working on video production, the editing was most, the most um, daunting and, and um, intimidating thing. Uh, but let me tell you, the more we practice, the better it's gonna get, the easier it's gonna get. So um, I know it can be intimidating, but you can do it. All right, so I've divided this section into three parts. Um, let's talk about the beginning, the beginner section first. Um, so all of these editing uh, softwares here are gonna be most of the ones that you've heard before. Um, the most popular one probably is iMovie. That's kind of become um, like a verb uh, in and it of itself. That you will find for free uh, on your Mac if you have one. Pretty user-friendly. Uh, it's kind of like drag and drop. A lot of this, uh, even the pr the professional ones like Final Cut and Premiere Pro, uh, they're gonna be you know drag and drop, kind of like the way I see it is like a puzzle, right? You're building a puzzle with your editing. So uh, iMovie is great uh, for a beginning with a beginner with that. Adobe Premiere Rush, uh, this one is great if you're editing on your mobile phones on your smartphones. Um, it's an awesome tool. And again, it's it's free through the state licensing. Uh, you can try it out. I believe it works for most smartphones. Uh, you can um, drag and drop clips from your li library on your phone. Um, and even they even have some music, some stock music that you can use. And then the last one for as a beginner, I would recommend Adobe Spark. Uh, now this one is mostly for the desktop. Um, this will work. I don't think there's a, a video editing Adobe Spark app on mobile phones, but you can do, use this uh, through a, through their website, and it's great. Um, it, it acts a little bit like. Um, uh, like a PowerPoint generator almost, but you can definitely add uh, videos that you've filmed with your phone or other cameras. Um, now the next one is intermediate and professional. So these are the ones that we use. Uh, our team uses Adobe Premiere Pro and, and these are gonna be the, the heavy hitters, right? This is gonna be what we use for documentaries, for or uh, SGEN, for even editing this PDTV. Um, so if you want to get into this uh, professional level editing software, you definitely can. There's a ton of um, uh, tutorials out there that are free on YouTube uh, that take you from the very beginning opening the, pro the program uh, until exporting your very first video. So again, this is for more advanced, um, a, a more advanced skill set. So, uh, you know, take that as you will. So, and then the next option is the free open source um, software. So this is for all, all the all the people that are thinking, well, I have a PC, you know, I've been talking about Macs um, and all the stuff that you can do with them. But PC is a little bit different because they um, they don't have their own um, 
editing software like iMovie for Macs. So, so for PCs, for Windows machines, you kind of have to work around it and, and look at uh, a bunch of different open source uh, programs. Okay, so with this presentation, I've actually linked an article that has uh, 24 of the free programs that you can use for PC uh, and also Mac, but a lot of these are for PC. Um, these are gonna be open source, free to use. Uh, some have um, some um, uh, paid tiers. If, if you have a PC and you don't have access to a Mac, I would definitely look at this list uh, and pick from the top ones because there's uh, there's a lot that, that programs that you can use to edit your videos on your PC. So Fernando covered kind of the end of a project, but you want to start with a really good plan in mind. So before you start filming, have yourself a good solid outline. You want to know what your idea is and how you want to get that idea across to your audience. A good way to keep your ideas on track or how you want to visualize your idea, you can storyboard or do a script. When I say storyboard, most of you I'm sure are thinking about like the professional storyboarders at Disney or Pixar or things like that. You do not need to have that sort of artistic skill to do your own storyboard. As you can see in this example here, it is just a few squares with some stick figures and they have a little description underneath about what the shot is. If that helps you, great, you know, draw some little sketches out and just go from there and then plan your shot by shot. If you're not this visual or you don't feel like your video really needs this kind of in-depth storyboarding, go ahead and just write yourself a script or even a few bullet notes for um, your video that you can kind of pull up on the side and you can be like, okay, look over. Okay, now I'm on to this next point or this next point. Try not to have yourself too scripted because if you're too scripted in your video, you'll seem kind of wooden or just too stiff. So you kind of want to keep your uh, video personal and authentic. All right, so our next part is music. Um, music can be a little bit uh, complicated at times because of copyright. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that we're following copyright laws and not using music that it's uh, owned by someone else and we don't have permission to, to use it. Um, but at the same time, music can help your videos uh, get to the next level. Um, now for uh, educators out there, there are some resources that are free for you to use um, to get uh, copyright free uh, music. So the first one that you can look at is Sounds Abound. Um, now with this one, you have to log in through your uh, MyUEN login. Um, but after that, you'll be able to browse their catalog and all their libraries and pick and choose from which uh, which song you want. Um, and then you can use that in your, in your edit and it's gonna get a million views and it's gonna be awesome. Um, then the next thing is uh, free music archive. So now this one is, uh, I think, a little bit more for uh, independent producers and filmmakers, but you can definitely look into this library. Um, might, I might have a little bit more different uh, vibe and style of music that you can choose from. Uh, this um, website will have Creative Commons and uh, or attribution that you have to put on your con on your videos. So, so just be mindful of that. If you find a song that you really like, really look at the fine print of what the copyright um, is on that. Um, and then Sound Bible, this one is, uh, I was doing a little bit of research and I found this one that also has um, a lot of Creative Commons, uh, licensed music, but also public domain sound effects. Music is will definitely impact your, um, your content and don't be afraid to experiment. All right, and our final tip is, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So when you're looking at all that fun music and graphics and fonts and colors, be intentional about your use of those and not just because they're cute or it bounces or it dances or you thought it was funny at the time. So think about what you want students to understand from your video and use those as tactics to help get that message across rather than distract from it. So um, definitely think about when I add this bitmoji, or when I add this font, or this really crazy color, is that going to help my students understand this content? I know that I often will see fun 
St. Patrick's Day colors or Valentine's Day colors in content, but that's actually really tricky to read, yellow text on a white background. So think about, is this, is the fun aspect of this that I'm trying to engage my students with, is that actually maybe hindering their learning because of that design choice? Um, and so that leads into this kind of um, diverse learner or um, in an accessibility. Think about the universal design. What is actually going to help my, my students understand this? If I were colorblind, would that color choice help? If I were deaf, how would I access that content? Think about your closed captioning. There's all sorts of free tools that can also help with that. So um, take everything that we've said and make it intentional, make it good and, and thoughtful. And you'll end up with a great video that your students are learning from you. And that's the best outcome that you could ask for. Thanks for spending a few minutes of your time to learn about how to make your video a little bit better. Um, if you would like to reach out to us with any ideas or questions that you have, feel free to send us an email at resources at uen.org or catch us on any of our social media channels. That's it for our PD TV today. Back to you, Jared. Well, we'd really like to thank the UEM production team of Katie, Fernando, and Nicole for sharing their expertise and advice with us on creating pro quality video. And now you can go out there and create your own. Thanks for joining us for another episode of UEM PD TV. And remember, you can always check out our course catalog at uen.org slash professional development.